Due to a January cold snap, the British Columbia fruit industry is dealing with significant challenges. Host of Real Ag Radio, Sean Haney, joins us now with the very latest on this. So, Sean, how significant will crop losses be in 2024? Yeah, it's great to be with you here this morning. So today on Real Ag Radio, it's it, like every Thursday, it's our Farmer Rapid Fire, where we talk to farmers across the country and you'll find out what's going on in the farm. And and today we're going to hear from Sukhpal Ball. He is a cherry grower in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia. And he's talking about that, that significant cold snap that happened in the Okanagan Valley in January, where temperatures essentially went from, you know, around zero to minus 30 Celsius very, very quickly. Really didn't allow the, the, the cherry trees to, you know, to acclimatize to the colder weather. And it's really created havoc after kind of a warm period in, in January. He's talking about a 90% loss on this year's cherry crop. Now, that's one thing. It's very significant. But the other part of this is this is an area that has been hit by clim like bad climatic situations for really the last five years. There was the heat dome. Now it's the cold snap. There, obviously, British Columbia was also impacted by those atmospheric rivers. And it's really created some major, major issues for one of the, the biggest fruit-growing regions in all of Canada, if not North America. And the vineyards in, as well in the Okanagan Valley being significantly impacted as well by that cold snap. It's, it's not a good time to be raising fruit or owning a, a winery in the Okanagan Valley right now. Wow, yeah, a story of extremes there. So what is the industry asking for in the short term and the long term? Yeah, so the provincial government in British Columbia announced in mid-March a program for you know some of those cherry growers to do a replant on some of the trees that have been you know that need to to do the replanting. Remember, different than you're planting corn or wheat, uh, ch ch the fruit industry is uh, more of a long-term play. So the, the replant over the long term is one thing, but what about the now? And and when you have a significant financial adversity in one area over a number of years, at one point, there's an issue of, you know, is this farm actually sustainable and can I actually pay my bills, live the fight another day to benefit from that replant of those trees that is ongoing. So there still is a big push uh, at the provincial level and with the federal government for more short-term assistance because some of the current disaster relief programming these farmers don't even qualify for it for like agri recovery because they're not incurring an additional expense to get through the the situation. So uh, big time concerns for the for the BC fruit industry. So is this different than other disaster challenges? Um, in the sense, I, I think it is in the sense that it's it, 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 fruit is a long term play. It's it's not like you like you know, this happened in January. We're looking until summer of 25 for those producers to be able to harvest that that next crop of cherries. So I, I think that does make it a little bit different. And one of the things that Sue Paul talks to, has said to me in our interview that you can hear today on Real Ag Radio is that the federal government continues to talk about, you know, what can the BC fruit industry do to help with climate change and the battle against it, where really what producers need right now is they need some support and help to deal with some of the impacts of climate change, which is a kind of a dealing that's having a different kind of discussion through a different lens. So uh, I think this is a this is high value land. It's not like diversification. You can't just put in a hay crop when you're dealing with land that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars an acre. This land in the valley was meant to grow fruit or grow vines, not to grow some of those other crops. That, that also is what makes it different than other challenges. Wow, what a price tag per acre there. That was host of Real Ag Radio, Sean Haney. Appreciate your time. And this Real Ag Radio update brought to you by Heads Up Plant Protectants. You can go to headsupst.com for more information on their products. And you can catch Sean on his show, Real Ag Radio. It airs at 4.30 p.m. Eastern weekdays on Rural Radio, Channel 147 on Sirius XM. And we will talk with him again, actually, on Monday on Market Day Report.